Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and today I'm doing something a little different. Um, I'm turning 30 at the end of this month and in order to celebrate I thought it would be fun to talk about some of my favorite things over the next 30 days. Uh, yeah, so this is my project that I'm calling uh, 30 Days of Favorites or my overly ambitious why did I do this project but really it's just it's an excuse for me to talk about some of my favorite things and celebrate the fact that I'm turning 30 so yeah if you're interested I hope that uh, you watch and follow along as I talk about some of the things that I've come to love over the last 30 years. Uh, I have 10 subjects that I'm going to talk about and uh, basically I have 10 lists of 30. I It gets really complicated but I'm going to talk about things in batches uh, to kind of spread the love throughout the month and also so that it's not overwhelming and you're not watching like a two and a half hour video. Um, but yeah, this first set of things that I'm talking about are my favorite books and I'm going to talk about number 30 through 25 today and tomorrow it'll be the next batch and then so on until I end up at number one and then move on to my next subject so yeah we'll just get right into it. So coming in at number 30 is Unholy Night by Seth Graham Smith. Uh, he wrote Pride and Prejudice and Zombies which then became a movie. Not a very good movie but still pretty fun. Uh, this is his interpretation of the three wise men and their story and so if you couldn't tell by the title of Pride and Prejudice and Zombies he's a pretty comedic author and yeah this is really just kind of an adventure story it came out of nowhere uh, it almost could have even have been something completely unrelated to <laughs> you know, the story of, of Jesus and the wise men, but I understand why he probably took that story as well known, it's easier to sell the story. You kind of follow this character along who's a, a thief and it's just kind of a fun adventure story and kind of fun to read around Christmas time, you know, when everything's supposed to be taking place, but yeah, like I said, kind of a surprise. Uh, I think if that sounds interesting to you, you should pick it up. It's become one of my, my favorites. And also, I just, I love the design of the cover of this. So I'll show you a little bit of the inside, too, with the map and everything. Um, but yeah, so Unholy Night by Seth Graham Smith is my number 30 favorite book. Next on my list is The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender by Leslie Walton. And this is the story of a girl who is born with wings. And so it's magical realism. I guess there are odd things that happen and uh, they're never really addressed as being like odd. It's just like, look, she has wings. And it's never really explained why she's born with wings. Um, but the story follows three generations of the same family, uh, the women of this family. So it's like, I think, early 1900s and like 1930s and the 1950s. I could be off on this, but it's early 1900s. Um, and it's very beautifully written. The story is not a happy light story, so I wouldn't pick it up just on a whim, uh, but it is really beautiful. It's very whimsical. And each of these women is somehow cursed um, in love and life and you kind of follow their stories as to what happens because of this and maybe how things change from generation to generation and like I said it's just it's as wonderful and beautiful as the cover and I absolutely love it it's like I said it's my number 29 favorite book next on my list is Night Film by Marisha Pessel which is the story of a journalist who decides to investigate the suicide of uh, the daughter of a famous film director. He believes that the suicide may not be an actual suicide, that there may be something more sinister happening. 
Uh, and the director whose daughter this is, is famous for creating uh, cult films. And with the cult films, there's actually also kind of a cult that follows them and believes that they're hidden messages and deeper meanings. And so it's very dark, it's mysterious. There's the question of like, is there something supernatural happening? Um, so it's really good and creepy and there's an interesting element to it. Um, there are pieces in here that are uh, just like case files or articles and on some of them they have this little symbol and there's a app that you can download. I don't know if the app still exists. Um, this book's a couple years old now. But on the app you can scan the image and it'll give you an extra feature. And that's just a really cool added element. It's not something that's necessary to read the book and, and understand what's happening. It's just kind of a cool little extra. For example, one of the, the things is um, a file that shows you posters for the films that the director has done. There's an audio file, which is pretty cool. Uh, but yes, this was a really good, creepy read. I was kind of terrified by the end of it. Uh, and there's a lot of questions as to what's really happening and what's being presented may not always be accurate and maybe there's something that people are imagining that's not really happening. So I guess one of my favorite books, one of the creepiest reads that I've ever uh, read and I think if you're looking for something good and creepy you should pick up Night Film by Marcia Pessel. Next on my list is Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter by Seth Graham Smith. Uh, funny enough, <laughs> I really like Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, but I didn't think that the story idea followed through to the end. It was like really good for the first half and then it kind of just filtered out at the end. Um, Amer uh, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter works all the way through and again, it's just, he, he takes an idea or, or a piece of literature, puts his own kind of odd spin on things and gives you a fun interpretation of history in this case. And I mean, come on, it's Abraham Lincoln as a vampire hunter. What else do you need to know to pick this up? And another one that was made into a film. This one, uh, this film's a little bit better than Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, but still not like perfect uh but it's just a fun read it's just so cool to like think of abraham lincoln chopping vampires heads off um and so you know you get, you get the civil war you get lincoln's history growing up and then you get this idea that maybe vampires were involved in the south and that was why the south was so eager to uh you know, continue slavery because it, it helped the vampires. So yeah, it's, it's an interesting take on history. Um, obviously fiction, <laughs> but yes, one of my favorite books. Next on my list is The Near Witch by Victoria Schwab. Uh, I have mentioned many, many times on my channel that Victoria Schwab is one of my favorite authors. This is not the last book of hers that you will see on my list, uh, but this is her first book and it's a sort of original folktale story of uh, the town of Near and the witch that steals children that lives near them. And it follows this girl who kind of is trying to figure out the history behind this legend. Is this legend true? What's really happening? Because children do start disappearing. And then there's a stranger that comes into town and he's kind of dark and mysterious, but she's not completely convinced that he's the one responsible for the disappearances, so she's kind of taken it upon herself to investigate. And it's just... Victoria Schwab's writing is so poetic, and she has the ability to kind of intertwine darkness and hopefulness and infuse it into her stories and her characters, and it's wonderful that she was able to do this from the beginning. Like I said, this is the first book. I absolutely loved it. It's a pretty quick read. It's not that that long. Um, and so yeah, The Near Witch is one of my favorite books. And then coming in at number 25 
It's As You Wish by Carrie Elways. Uh, I got to see him uh, for when I got this book and he signed it and he's wonderful and he's so handsome in person. Uh, I love The Princess Bride. This is obviously uh, kind of the backstory of the film being made and it's Carrie Elway's is account of everything. Um, as well as, the, kind of the cool thing about this is that there are these little sections right here where he'll have written about something and then he went and asked somebody else who was involved in the film um, to comment on it or to give their own little take on whatever story it was that he was telling. So it's really, it's him and a bunch of the people from the, um, the film. So some of them are longer, some of them are shorter. But it's just wonderful to read kind of the behind the scenes story um, and it feels like you're sitting down just listening to him tell stories. And actually, I haven't yet, but I'm interested in seeing if I can get the audiobook because he narrates the audiobook. And it really would just be like sitting down and listening to him tell stories because it's literally him telling stories. Um, so yes, I just, I love this. And if you're a fan of The Princess Bride, you should absolutely pick this up because it just adds a little extra something. Um, like I said, it's so nice to see what people say about the experience and the people involved, and I just love it, which is why it's one of my favorites. So that's it for this video. Uh, if you're interested in seeing what's next on my list, you should subscribe. If you are liking this content, give the video a thumbs up, and comment down below on what you think of this. Uh, if there are any of the books that I mentioned today that you like, what you think of them, and yeah, I'll see you in my next video with my next set of favorite books. I'll see you next time. Bye.